Hello everybody, as promised, I am here with the recipe for the Al Pastor casserole that we tend to make in our family. You're gonna hear kids in the background because that's life. Anyhow, guys, the basis of this is just like any casserole. Honestly, it, you need some sort of protein in it, you need some sort of sauce in it, and then whatever else you're gonna add to it. Flavors that complement, things that you know go together. I. Uh, you're gonna know it by many different names, although it sounds like there might be some regions that don't really do stuff like this. Uh, I guess casseroles and hot dishes are really a Midwest thing, but I don't know. You guys let me know down in the comment section down below if you have them in your area, if, if it's a thing there, and if so, what they're called. Because I've heard casserole, I've heard hot dish, I've heard one dish, um, you know, like a one dish meal kind of thing. Anyhow, here is this recipe. I'm gonna flip this, show you all of the ingredients, how I put it together, uh, and just how it's all gonna look. All right, guys, this is a really, honestly, pretty simple meal. Uh, we have that thing of El Pastor. If you watched the last grocery haul video, you know that we got two of these. They're on sale. This needs to be used. Uh, it's dated for, well, here's a little secret. It's dated for tomorrow. So now you know when I filmed this uh, versus when it actually goes up. And again, excuse kids in the background there. They're getting excited. The dad just got home. All right. Um, I pulled out the taco sauce. I'm, guys, I am debating. Here's the beauty of casseroles. Again, you change it, you add it, you do what you want with it. Um, mm -hmm. I am contemplating trying taco sauce in it this time instead of adding just extra chili powder. We're going to see what I ultimately decide on that. Tomato sauce. I have two cans here. One of them are going to go in for sure. The other one just depends on how saucy it looks in the end because guys I don't measure much when I do this either we have one can of biscuits now we have added two of these in the past what we have learned is that um, it, it really uh, cooks up quite a bit uh, so while there's only like eight biscuits in there when you are filling the bottom of the pan with biscuit bits and then covering it that eight actually goes a really long way. Um, now we are using my extra deep, large Polish pottery dish here. And guys, this thing is huge. And we might be able to get away. I do have a second can just in case, but we're gonna start with the one, go from there. I really don't think we're gonna add the second one. I have diced up onions and bell peppers. I had some leftover cut up bell peppers in the fridge that needed to be used, uh, I think, our kids that enjoy snacking on them have mostly forgotten. Only one or two of them have been grabbing here and there, but they need to be used. So I cut those up smaller and we're gonna go ahead and add that almost fajita style. I've got a bunch of shredded cheese here. I don't know, probably three, four cups worth. And then I've got sour cream. Now this actually feels pretty light. So I'm gonna be grabbing another tub out because we are gonna want almost even portions of sour cream to cheese and to create that sauce add in the tomato sauce. We're gonna see how that looks. So let me go ahead. I'm gonna get my camera set up here so you can watch me work and I'm gonna add it all together. All right guys, so I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna get all of the sour cream I need added. I recommend putting your sour cream in your bowl first because when you add the cheese and stuff, you're not gonna have it getting stuck to the bottom. If you put the shredded cheese in first, Oops, sorry about that. Uh, you put the shredded cheese in first. It's parts of it are going to get stuck to the bottom of your bowl. And well, that just becomes a pain to scrape up with your spatula there. So I probably got one, two, you know, we're going to go ahead and put about four cups worth or so in there. A little extra for good measure. Guys, I warned you, I don't measure much. All right, now that we've got our sour cream in there, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna add all of our shredded cheese. And then I am gonna go ahead and add one of the cans of tomato sauce here. Make sure that's in your view. We are sauced. Now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start mixing this much together. All 
All right, now guys, as you can see, this is pretty pale. Right now, this is honestly just kind of a milky tomato, slightly cheese base. We are gonna go ahead and mix in our onions and peppers. I'm not a fan of wasting, so I like to get them all out of there. Now, I add my seasonings based on what I can smell. And I can definitely smell these onions and peppers. So that's gonna help me determine what I am adding seasoning wise to this. Now the Al Pastor does come pre-seasoned, but it honestly, guys, I'm gonna warn you, it gets really diluted with this amount of dairy. So we are gonna add, oh, a good dose of taco sauce. If I had to guess, I'd say, probably just added about half a cup of taco sauce. All right, now I can smell this pretty well, so I think that's probably gonna be good enough. Now there are some in our family who definitely like more flavor, and for myself, I would add more, but with little ones around, you gotta be careful what you do. So from here, what we need to do is prep, I'm gonna slide this out of the way a little bit, prep our biscuits. Now in the past, we have added them directly to the bottom of our casserole dish and poured the filling over it. I actually do not recommend this because it um, can bake to the bottom of the dish, even if you grease it first. So I, what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna add the Al Pastor directly to this and then we're gonna take this and every biscuit you cut into four pieces. So cut it in half and then cut those in half again. Drop it in. If you want it even smaller, you can cut it smaller. But I recommend about that size. Mix absolutely everything together and then we'll add it to our pan. Okay. All right, in goes the Al Pastor. Now I just dump this straight in like that. It comes out in almost a giant sheet. This is all bits and pieces of pork that are marinated and seasoned. So we're gonna mix that really well down into that sauce. All right guys, really quick, I'm switching to a wooden spoon because I, it's been just a little while since I've made this. I kind of forgot that this silicone spatula uh, flexes too much when you're trying to break up that pork. So we are gonna switch to this here in just a moment. Now you can try to add the pork to the bottom of this first, um, but when it comes to mixing your sauce and stuff, it's just easier um to add it once you've got your sauce already mixed in so we are basically just going to sit here and break apart all of those pork pieces and then as soon as i get this broken up just enough i've actually got one of my daughters standing here who's going to start cutting up the biscuit parts and putting them in because guys that's kind of the fun job <laughs> and she enjoys that all right guys as another correction to uh we used to do this as the quarters which are perfectly fine um, and get her to bring her hands over here more. So we actually recommend, because these Grand's biscuits are so large, to, she's having a hard time seeing in camera here, uh, cut it into three long strips and then cut those strips into three or four pieces, depending on the size of it. So in the end, your pieces are gonna end up about quarter size, nickel to quarter, somewhere in there. So while she continues cutting those, I will keep mixing all of this up. And you literally just mix it in like this, guys. All right, guys, the very last of the cut up biscuit pieces have been added. I'm going to mix all of this in. Now it is important to keep mixing while those are being added, um, not just all at once, because otherwise that biscuit dough will clump together. And well, it's not gonna make for a very varied casserole if you do that. All right, we've got some good aromas coming out of this. This is gonna be pretty awesome. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna slide this back, slide our casserole dish in, move that spatula out of the way, because I'm just gonna go ahead and use this wooden spoon for this. Now guys, actually let me slide this back for a second. Quick plug, I do not sell these, but I will tell you these large Tupperware bowls, 
They've got this handle on them and it is amazing when you're lifting something like this to hook your thumb through. So that bowl is not gonna get away from you when you're dumping things. And this is a really big thing when you are a large family making lots of food. That, that handle can just make all the difference. Okay, now I'm gonna scrape this bowl out. Now I did have a couple of kids begging us to go ahead and put two cans of biscuits in because they just love it when they're when it's so biscuity. But the problem you're gonna have with that is as these biscuits bake, they're still going to plump up the same way they would if you were just cooking them without being buried and stuff. And when that happens, that can cause this casserole dish to overflow. Um, so if you're gonna tempt fate with that, by all means do it. I just recommend sticking a cookie sheet in your oven underneath of the casserole dish, just to try and help eliminate some of those messes in the bottom of your oven. Cause well, that can smell for quite a while when you've got dairy and stuff that overflowed. It is not a pleasant smell. Okay, so we are gonna level some of this out. Now guys, the key to a really good casserole is the crust on top. And there are a couple of good ways to achieve that. One, you can do some sort of bread crumb, bread crumb mixture across the top. You can do uh, crumbled corn flakes and butter mixture across the top. Or what we will end up doing for this one is some shredded cheese across the top. The thing is though, you don't want to do that right off the bat because that crust is going to burn. Um, we are gonna go ahead and put tinfoil across this. And being a cheese crust, it would stick to that tinfoil as well. We are gonna cover this with tinfoil, throw it in the oven at 350 degrees for about an hour and a half. I will check it at that point. Now guys, because this is pork, you're gonna wanna check the center. So use a fork or a knife, dig in the center like this, and find a chunk of pork to check because the last thing you want is to serve undercooked pork. We do not need anybody getting food poisoning. So check it then. If the, for, if the pork is not fully cooked, go ahead and throw it back in uh, for another 15 to 30 minutes, depending on just what you found. If you find cheese pieces, because we've got that shredded cheese in here too, in the middle that are not melted, just know that your pork is not fully cooked. But if your cheese is melted, all of your biscuits are cooked, and you don't find any raw pork, then you're good to go. Then at that point, we're gonna go ahead and we'll add a thin layer of shredded cheese across the top without, and then leave it uncovered, throw it back in for about 15 minutes and let that cheese melt and form a nice little crust across the top. Now I'm telling you guys this because there's a very real chance because I'm busy that I will forget to show you that part, but I'm gonna try to if I can remember to. Okay guys, really quick, I just wanted to show you this while my family's decorating the Christmas tree behind me. This was after an hour and a half, and you can see here, this is very pink, almost crumbly looking. And if we look down in here, if I can find a chunk of biscuit down in here, we're gonna see very doughy biscuit. This is not cooked in the middle. And because we, ours is made so large, which also guys is why I don't really give quantities, because um, we make large batches of everything. So if you're gonna make this with the quantities that I did, you need a large dish, hour and a half. Guys, it's also gonna depend on your elevation, but an hour and a half was not quite enough. So I have pulled the tin foil off and uh, this is gonna go back in the oven now. Given how pink a lot of this is still, you can see on along the edges where stuff is getting golden, that's closer to what it's supposed to look like. We're gonna throw this back in for about half an hour, check it again, then we'll top it with cheese if it's fully cooked and we'll go from there. Okay guys. Uh, the casserole is fully cooked. I just added the shredded cheese. Um, that's kind of the, the golden cooked look you want. The cheese is already melting because of the heat of it. I'm gonna throw it back in. About 10 minutes or so, I think is all it's actually gonna take. And then we are gonna be ready to eat. There it is, guys. Straight from the oven, still sizzling around the sides even. That little bit of cheese I put on it has melted down and started to crisp just ever so slightly. Perfect casserole. We're gonna let this sit for about 10 minutes. I'm gonna push this back, so I got a little one coming. Um, we'll let this sit for about 10 minutes. Uh, I usually wait until all the bubbling around the edges is done. It means it cools just enough that we can fit everybody. And yes, I see Micah. Thank you for sharing with everybody. 
he was just given that card from my husband as he's cleaning out uh, stuff in his side of the room. So anyhow, guys, there it is. We're gonna let this sit uh, and then dish it up, let everybody enjoy. You can probably check out more pictures of that on my Instagram. Okay guys, so ultimately it took about two hours in the oven to bake. Now keep in mind, if you're making a smaller casserole, it's not gonna take that long. Don't let that deter you. That is when I am making something so large. Um, I mean, this, this is pretty thick, guys. Anyhow, it's because we make so much for the size of our family that it does end up taking so long. So I do prepare this um, or plan ahead of time. And as you can tell, maybe, maybe not. It's right about 6.30. Uh, so it is dinner time. But that is what we are going to enjoy tonight. If you have any questions, leave that in the comment section down below about casseroles or anything else like that. And I will get back to those as soon as I can. In the meantime, I hope that you guys have enjoyed this recipe. If you try it out, I would also love to hear about that. And I hope that you guys are having a blessed day. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss everything else coming up next. And I'll see you in the next one.